we saw a bunch of new mirror setups that helped make both of the upstairs sites even more viable. So like Cache uh, was always a site that teams liked to go to, but then teams started to find new mirror placements that basically made the site even better. So now it's like first pick almost every time. A lot of teams don't even uh, worry about Church until they after they've won Cache. And then on top of that, we see Gym Bedroom has actually got a uh, a couple of mirror setups as well, whether you want to hold construction or whether you want to hold inside a little bit more. So I can definitely see a mirror ban being pretty useful here. And of course, you already mentioned the Kaid. Biggest thing about him is that he can electrify hatches from below. So the fact that there was a Thatcher ban, I think definitely prompted the Kaid ban, because you don't want to have a Kaid in the game when you can't play Thatcher. It, it definitely becomes an interesting proposition when that does come about. And yeah, you were talking about teams' familiarity with this map in particular. And I'll tell you what, it did go through an overhaul. I think just out of the maps that have been overhauled so far, this one is by far, uh, at least the public consensus, that this is the best job that the map makers have done in reworking a map. And there's a lot of things that didn't change, like a change, a lot of spots. Uh, the overall feel of the map, you know, they changed up bar and pool table and all that sort of stuff. And then, of course, they changed a lot of the upstairs as well. And then they changed that that stairway down into blue. But the map was not completely changed like we've seen with a couple of the other reworks. I mean, uh, we've seen maps, I mean, just totally transformed. Completely different. Yeah. yeah, exactly. This one, it's, I mean... From day one, teams were able to hop on this map and didn't have many problems at all. But the meta, you're right, for cash kind of evolved over the months uh, since its release upstairs. Everything else, pretty much the same. Still don't see bar ever. Um, but anyways, that's a little bit besides it. A minute deep. Here we go. Some droning coming out. I'm not sure. Yes, indeed. They have entered the building right underneath. No resistance at all. We'll have the IQ shooting up through the floor, taking out ADSs. And my goodness, is she going to get a lot of work down uncontested underneath? I'm not sure if they droned up the cash stairs to see if there's any resistance up top, which there is, but never sitting at the top of the stairs, not pushing, nothing. I'm sure she hears activity going on underneath, but there will be no engagement just yet. And just like that, there go the batteries right off of the wall, allowing the, there he is, thermite to come right on up and open her up. Yeah, so IQ is a very common replacement for something like a... Um... Something like a Thatcher, because as you're seeing right here, you can just go beneath and shoot out those bent batteries from below, and that lets your thermite get this wall open. One minute left on the clock, I think they could have done that a little bit faster, but even still, having this east wall open is extremely huge. It gives you so many more options as an attacker if you want to try to play the site. So far, we see two members of Powerhouse holding down construction. Doesn't look like anyone from the side of Slaughterhouse is really focused on that direction. And they haven't even entered in Garage yet, so they're, they're sort of putting everything they have into this east side attack, either up those stairs, or actually, just as I say that, we have two members of Slaughterhouse rotating all the way over here, three members even, trying to flush out the defenders of Powerhouse. Ninja Croft goes for a peek. Neither of them going to be able to get the kill quite yet. And now 30 seconds left on the clock. They do have to push in. One goes down. That's Assault Queen. And now we're down to a 4v5. 30 seconds left on the clock. Let's see what Slaughterhouse can do on their attack. Small Yellow Snake will get a refrag. Yes, indeed. Yellow just holding tight in construction now as the attackers move closer and closer to site. Still 4v4, but only 10 seconds left. They got to get moving right now. Lysa in the garage. We'll see one, but no, we'll lose. And a slaughter will come out from Post, Melon, Bailey, everybody together. The plant will go down. He'll come in. He'll score. Oh, my goodness. Defenders with the 1v3 clutch. Coming in at the last second, they had no idea that she was at the rotate hole, and what a save by Powerhouse. That, so that was a really back and forth round, and the first thing I want to say is that I really like what Slaughterhouse was deciding to do at first. They got the east wall open, and then they pushed in through construction, got their thermite all the way over there, so that was a pretty big rotation there after just having taken down the east wall. And so opening up these, both of those reinforcements that we saw using Thermite opens up so many extra angles for the attackers to play with. It really puts pressure on the defense. And once both of those walls are open, if you don't contest early enough uh, as a defender, then you suddenly find yourself in a situation where you can't really sit anywhere and be safe at the same time. 
So I liked the way they planned that out. I would have liked to see it go a little bit faster, but when, when it came down to it, even with just 10 seconds left, those angles just help Slaughterhouse win the round, or almost win the round completely. It was a 3v1, but then once again, like you said, the sneak up from the east stairs through the hole, through the rotation hole, and that was enough to clutch the round out. So really good awareness on the side of, uh, of Powerhouse. And I think Slaughterhouse, um, the fact that they did have to rush meant that they didn't have enough time to post someone over, so get someone over to those east stairs and really watch it. Yeah, and sorry about the little bit of uh, technical difficulties that we're having. We just got set up right before the stream started, but I wanted to tell everybody out there a huge, huge shout out to Handsome Live, our observer for the match, and DJ Dextros for stepping up um, on very short notice to make sure that everything goes gravy. So we will work through those technical details, you know, audio and stuff like that, and we will bring you the best show we know how. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen, straight into round two. Breach is going off in the building about 30 seconds off the clock looks like a full downstairs turtle now there's no jackal to contend with so in situations like this a roam game is not necessarily something that is uh, a rarity in these circumstances but instead it appears no actually as i say that it looks like the vigil will be hanging out i'm not sure if she's master right now or perhaps cash i did not see how far down the map those outline was but either way, yes, she is on Master Stairs, creeping down the drones nearby. We'll see if perhaps they get any intel on that. But at the very least, the push is being slowed down quite significantly as the seconds tick away. Yeah, when it comes to roaming on this map, it's a pretty much a double-edged sword. Uh, there's a lot of space for you to roam, a lot of places for you to hide, and you can be incredibly impactful if you take a flank in the kitchen and just mow down whoever's trying to open up the hatch there. On the other hand, you don't actually have a lot of angles to work with if you're a roamer. You have a couple of stairways that can be easily washed by drones. Or we see Buck going around and Assault Queen is going to take out Ninja Croft with a headshot, opening up the round. And that is a good start for the attackers here. Very good start indeed. Taking out that roamer nice and early. About half the round left to go. Finally getting some of that hard breach open. And if I'm not mistaken, Church Wall. Is it soft? No, it isn't. Reinforced from the other side. Just couldn't see the little pieces from the other side of the wall but they will also reinforce the very front panel heading into the back of the site post melon she'll find a kill onto lysa and the wall of church will start getting opened up right away so slaughterhouse looking good so far yep and speaking of two headshots back to back that's a trade so it looks like both small yellow snake and never are going to go down but 43 seconds left lady gets another kill under her belt, Assault Queen goes down. Bailey with a frag as well, leaving us in a 3v1, and they're going to seek her out really quickly. Post Malone finishes that one off, and Slaughterhouse win the second round, evening it up to 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one, yes. And I tell you what, Slaughterhouse, 3-1 that they lost just by happenstance because they weren't protecting the defuse in the closing seconds of round one. So Slaughterhouse has been looking good. That one mistake, they didn't let that bother them too much. And they were able to come right on back and heftily win round number two. Also a scoreline three to one at the end or a operator count three to one right at the end there. So, uh, so far, so good for them. I think they kind of settled down after giving away round number one and have come back. And the slaying ability that we've seen so far has been a little bit more efficient than we've seen from Powerhouse so far. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a good estimation of uh, what's been happening. And so we're going to see another church defense down here. Generally, yeah, once you win uh, cash, this is your second site. Again, especially if Mir's banned, you know, there are a couple of cool holds you can do with her in gym bedroom. And some teams, even without her, uh, like to go to gym bedroom as well. But so far, it looks like we're, we're seeing a more standard sort of bomb site rotation here. In terms of the defensive operators, there's not too much of a change for them. They still have the roaming vigil, which is one of the main things I want to focus on this round. Last round, the uh, vigil ninja didn't really get too much value. Uh, she didn't even waste very much time. And that was just a really good awareness and heads up play and good headshot by Assault Queen. So all those things factor in together means that Ninja unfortunately didn't have too much of an impact last time, but it seems like she's going to try a similar thing this time and we'll see if she can get a frag. As should she. She shouldn't let one, you know, unsuccessful roam attempt ruin her whole day, right? Change your whole strategy up. 
one to one very early in the game. Things are still comfortable here for both teams. Nobody's lost yet, right? So did she waste much time? No, you're right. Sure, it was about a 118 left in the, and here comes Molly up top just to help her out in this circumstance. But I'll say last time she just kind of got caught out by Buck pretty heftily. She got her back seen by the Buck as she was sneaking over in to strip. But here comes Buck right again. I'm not sure what sort of intel they have. I'm not sure if Buck would be taking them on 1v2 if perhaps she knew. But there's one going down the stairs. Buck will see it right at the last second. I'm not sure if she knows if there's somebody up there, but there's not now. Probably a hatch drop. And Mozzie will hang out right there in the middle of bar. Not a whole lot going on. Only a minute off the clock. Some hatches getting up and up. They know there's some activity and some roaming going on. So we'll probably be seeing some drones. And just like we're seeing Pyro right now, angles being held trying to find out where did those rumors go. The rumors aren't being very fluid, so if they did a little bit more intel gathering, perhaps they would catch them. And there it is, just like that pyro. People around the corner, Lysa, not the best spot in the world to be frozen. No escape route for her, as you will get easily dispatched. No damage done at all. Back onto the Twitch. Some bullets will go back and forth. And around the corner, Pyro will find her second of the round. This time, not unscathed. She'll go down to about 10 health. I love the communication from Slaughterhouse here. They knew that there were at, there was at least one roamer. I think that maybe they knew there were two because they were definitely playing like there was. And they knew the only places they had to rotate out were down that hatch or down the main stairs. And that was why Pyro was sitting there holding those angles, waiting for one of them to try to rotate out. Those roamers could not get back to the site unless they crossed Pyrrha's vision. And that is exactly the kind of communication and angle holding that I like to see. And that puts them quite far in the lead as Post Melon gets yet another frag. And this is going to be a pretty free diffuser plant. It is indeed. Uh, Todd will come right back. She'll find two back at the spot. Was, wasn't able to stop the diffuse, but will get on it right away. She'll pull off of it. Not her if she was, if she was heard. She'll peek around the corner to see one. Find another. That's a triple for her. Reload. We'll pull up, pull the pistol out, but it will not be enough. A valiant effort. Last alive yet again. But Lauderhouse, too many bodies to keep throwing at the Jaeger, and it will be them winning their second in a row. Yep, two in a row. They're looking pretty good. And again, like uh, like my friend Ty here mentioned uh, way back during round one, the first round, they, the Slaughterhouse was looking in control. It was just a very clutch play by Powerhouse that let them uh, sneak that victory away. So in reality, so far, we've seen Slaughterhouse actually be in a pretty commanding place in this game so far. And uh, let's see if that ends up changing, but it... Of course, they don't have to switch bomb sites. They can go back to CCTV catch, cache. Uh, and so they found some success here. Again, it was one where they had to rely on a clutch, but perhaps they have some sort of different strategy. Um, if we think back to the first round and try to remember what happened there, it was mostly just a completely uncontested first floor that let uh, every member of Slaughterhouse get the walls they need, get the information they need, there was an IQ just sitting there taking out every single gadget, and the entire time there was just nobody contesting them. So I think if there's one major change that Powerhouse should pull, it's probably to have some, some roamer challenge that first floor. Absolutely, and we also are aware that there are some game audio issues. That's our fault, unfortunately. Everything in the game itself is going fine, so we're not going to stop the match to get uh, a production detail figured out so we are working on that as heftily as we possibly can but that's okay you get to listen to as a rocky dragon speak right so what's better than that you don't need game audio when as on the mic right I've here we I, go I, i've heard uh, that i sound like a history teacher i don't know if that's like a good thing or a bad thing i was thing. thinking a math teacher what do you think okay. Chad? Let okay. us know. uh but here we go round number four back up to cash as it is available once more to defend for powerhouse they found some luck here the first time in that 1v3, clutching it out at the last second. Can they find that luck again? The game is not out of either team's hands right now. It is not a runaway by any stretch of the imagination just yet. But Powerhouse, not looking so good so far, are going to have to really turn it up if they want a chance of bringing this match back. And so far, Todd is already trying to deny any info and any entrance into the garage. A very strong spot, especially for a dock to play. Now, of course, uh, there was a point where those little gaps between the uh, the railings up in that garage were 
uh, were little places that you could peek through, and you basically had a pixel peek through them. Now they've sort of cleaned that up. Ubisoft has removed that, and so it's it's harder to play Garage now than it was before, but it's still a very strong position, not only because you have that high ground and you have a decent amount of cover, uh, as long as you have ADSs and people can't throw grenades up there, but um, it's also a very important position, because if the attackers get control of Garage here, then they can just choke out all of the space in CCTV. Absolutely. And one thing that I've been seeing from the rumors of Powerhouse is... They've been kind of static, right? They've been finding a little spot to kind of get down into and hang out, and it just hasn't been working for, for them, right? We all know about Peeker's Advantage, and that's one thing, right? But let's say you're coming around the corner. You're actually clearing the room as you're slowly coming around the corner. And so if you come eventually to somebody who's hiding in the corner, right, you only, you only have one spot to look at because you're actively clearing, clearing, clearing as you're moving, right? But somebody who's like huddled down in a corner by the steps and bar, for example, only has one, you know, they have to watch all the angles. And so can they react fast enough? That's the question. Lysa, show up the things up with a kill onto Bailey, but traded right back by Snake onto Ninja. So it's a 4v4, a lot of damage done to the IQ as well. Legion, a little damage done, and here comes the wall getting open from construction. It will indeed get open. Slayer, she'll have, hold a very tight angle, but Post will be there to shut her down. IQ will make her small amount of health work in their advantage. 4v3, 15 seconds left. One will go down. Todd will get one. Assault will frag right back. So we got a 2v2 effective. Assault, she'll find a two-piece, start planting that diffuser, and only the bandit left. The C4 will miss. They now know that the bandit is underneath. She will come up, cast stairs, but no. There will be one at the top. That's Pyra. Ready for it. And Slaughterhouse now three in a row. Yeah, and for a second there, it looked like Powerhouse could have pulled something back, but Slaughterhouse, again, just powering through. And uh, I think they're showing that they're the real Powerhouse in this matchup right here. Uh, but one thing I want to mention about that specific matchup is that uh, it was pretty similar to what Slaughterhouse did to attack the first time. Uh, they first got the East Wall open, and then they focused their efforts on construction. And so I think... Those sort of things combined, and what we saw from the very first round, Powerhouse didn't really make any big adjustments to their defense this time around. They didn't have any anyone, say, roaming around toward the, uh, toward the gym bedroom half of the map. They didn't have anyone denying that space. And so Slaughterhouse basically just got all of the free uh, map control that they needed to close in on construction and basically flush both defenders out there. Um, there was ADSs to prevent the frag grenades, but even that wasn't enough, uh, because even without frag grenades, they just won the duels just by sheer force, by manpower, by girl power. And um, yeah, it was just a pretty clean take overall by Slaughterhouse. So let's see what they decide to do for their defense this time. Same site, however, they will be using a castle this time around. And that's something that... Uh, when this map first got reworked, we saw a ton of castle play, and he used um, he used the castle barricades to block out the windows into construction, and it looks like they're doing something similar here, um, the doorway to construction instead of the window. I think I would actually like to see both the doorway and the window if they're going for this hard, hard anchor sort of style. Uh, their plan is to make sure nobody can get control of construction, Again, I would want to see a roamer maybe challenge people in gym bedroom and make them make the attackers always check behind them, always be wary. Um, and I think that would probably work better than this hard, hard, um, this hard bunker bunkering down and anchoring up here. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the bunkering down. It just hasn't worked for them. And uh, right now it's up to them to realize or their IGL to realize that that's what is kind of causing them to get into a operator disadvantage right and and they just haven't had the capacity to come back from that right we've seen when the engagement happened good trades have been coming out one for one one for one we've seen them have even a two piece but it always trades right back so when you're at that disadvantage and that tends to be what's happening you're, you're never going to come out on top so losing those people in the very beginning of the round you have to if roaming is not going to work for you that's fine turtle all day just make sure that you're in a position that if somebody's going to get killed you instantly can refrag 
Doc will be holding it down up top. We'll trade some bullets with Bailey on the Capital. Some damage will be done to both. Doc will heal herself back up. And we will progress a little bit further. And a very nice angle being held. Lysa will find one onto the head of Bailey. But Assault Queen immediately frags back onto Todd. Four to four. Still plenty of time left. Assault Queen with another two piece. Two rounds in the row in a row with a multi kill. She won't see because of the ACOG. Somebody jumped down. Listen for that audio cue. Lysa, she'll pick up her second as well. So that will even things out once again. No, actually, it'll be a three to two now. But Snake, she'll run in. She will begin the diffuser plant. And uh, she'll hear the C4 get thrown, but not correct in the spot, in the placement. That diffuser will still continue to go down. We've got multiples downstairs. Something will be on stairs for a long time. Somehow managed to stay alive. I have eyes on the shot. diffuser. As Attackers need will to protect rotate it. Back over to the diffuser. Snake and Small will both try. I'm sorry, Snake and Dragon Slayer, rather, will both trade. And a run out from Lysa. Will prove Defender to has left the area Just of operation. And what a pro. Doesn't even care about cleaning the kill off, even though she has plenty of time. She rather gets the round win. And not show Defenders off. The Fantastic user. job. Bond of Here we go. Failed. Defenders Powerhouse win. winning a much needed round. Definitely a much needed round. And the there is sort of an unfortunate reality of what's going on. And that is the fact that we all know Clubhouse is a defender sided map. So the fact that the, the best that Powerhouse could do is potentially 3 3. And not only that, but in order to uh, force the tie they would have to win this round on a site that they have not won before. So far, the only site they've won is CCTV Cash. And so, so far, the the, uh, the map is not looking very much in their favor. And you definitely want to be... You definitely want to have more than two rounds under your belt as a defender on, on Clubhouse, especially new Clubhouse. So we'll see what ends up happening here and how they'll decide to defend Jim Bedroom, they're bringing Castle again, they decided that Attackers need to locate and well defuse bombs. Time. And I feel like they're probably going to have a pretty similar focus on construction, is uh, what I have to guess, seeing this castle being brought. Also, I get it, I've been getting message after message, okay? Okay, I get it, it's, is it, Liza? Tell me how to pronounce it properly. I'm getting messages, but nobody is phonetically... Oh, it's Lissa. Lissa. Okay. Lysa. Lissa. It's Lissa. My apologies. Everybody calm down. Ten I seconds get it left. Lissa. The Slayer for Powerhouse here so far. Five uh, seconds. But, yeah, I missed the kill count. Mr. Handsome Live, our beautiful... Uh, Attacker's objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. Today. Thank you so much. Yes. So... 3-2, still anybody's game at this point in time. Ninja sitting at the bottom of the pile with the one and five. Needs to do a little bit more work. Meanwhile, the rest of the team seems to be doing fantastic together. Same thing with Slaughterhouse. All the team seems to be contributing. Post doing a little bit of extra work on the slang side. And here we go. Round number six, 3-2 is the score line. And again, it looks like it'll be a full, a full turtle upstairs with a little bit of pressure being put into construction. One of these days, I think I'm gonna say Post Malone. And I think that's Reload! the reason why she chose that name. It's it's there to trip me up. It's a conspiracy. It is. Uh, I, I I interviewed her pre-game, and she said, "You know that Azeroth guy? I, I'm gonna mess him up. That's okay." Specifically me. No other casters. I'm I'm just being targeted here. Uh, but so far, it looks like we're seeing a pretty decent amount of blood so far. You know, they're attacking through Jim, which is something that's a little bit substandard. Attackers have located a, a bomb. You end up seeing teams uh, go through the jacuzzi wall, but it doesn't look like there's a lot of... There's not a lot of place for the defenders to challenge anything. They're actually going to blow open the, uh, the castle barricade with a, uh, with a frag grenade, so that'll open a couple more angles up, and... So I think it'll actually be a little bit easier for the defenders to rotate there. I think it might have actually had a better idea to, uh, to keep that wall, uh, to keep that castle barricade up, is what I'm trying to say. Well, I, I think they did that to shoot the batteries off of the um, jacuzzi balcony. Uh, now, are they going to go around and open it? I didn't see any anybody over there, but uh, they did shoot the batteries off. So I'm not sure if that was the intent or if that was just a side effect. Oh, uh -huh. So open one up. Lissa, okay, Lissa, right we'll get the refrag right back on the assault tower. That small, she will push into cash. Poke 
her head right towards her, but not pushed there. And Dragon Slayer just hanging out, waiting for somebody to come around. She hears a footstep, but the patience, that's all she needs to do. Sit there and wait. We've got two still into construction, as it looks like the attacking team seems to have pushed back outside. Oh, she will get one at the window there into Jim. Still about 30 seconds left, 4v5, and right up the stair post with a two-piece back-to-back. Doing a fantastic job so far as the defuser will start to go down. The ninja Jack is going to stop immediately. 3v2, time ticket away now, but post will come in from the backside. She's got a triple so far, so check tower. Absolutely the nothing there. It's a three on one. Poor Dragon Slayer left all alone in construction. Legion Mine surrounding her completely. Attackers so are the punch reacts slowly, but oh, what a headshot. Fantastic job. But the diffuser is down. A lot of work left to be done and only one doorway to go through to get there. She will creep. She will check her angles, but the time is running out. She will be the one that has to make the move. She got the window, thus alerting that that might be a possible route, but the attacking squad ready for it. They'll stay outside. She'll peek around. She'll shoot. She'll find another. So what is one the time on the diffuser will take away, though. She needs to make a move and make it now. She will enter master bedroom, post hiding in the shower. Not sure if she was spotted. Legion wasting too much time, and that will be it. I don't think she has the time to defuse. So go with the pistol. Won't be able to shoot up. IQ's got that. Post with the Quadra. Kill on the round. And Slaughterhouse will retain their lead. Just a really patient play. Really paid off there. Um, in a situation like that, it's it's a, basically a guaranteed win. If you stay back, if you don't let the... Um, the adrenaline rush take you over, and that's something that uh, we see a lot of a lot of players uh, come to fault with. Especially since we saw Post Melon, I think she got two, maybe three frags um, earlier on in the round, and it's really easy to ride off that high and be like, "Yeah, I can do anything. I can challenge every angle." Uh, but there is always a chance that even if you try to take that fight, even if you try to win the peak war from uh, from the bathroom, that you're going to get headshot and then you lose your team in the round. But instead, she just stays safe, stays in the bathroom, waits to hear any potential uh, defuse go off, and from there she can just um, she can just challenge the Attackers need to locate and defuse as so many I, bombs I as they can. It's something that, uh, that a lot of people end up struggling with. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Yes, indeed. Attackers must locate and defuse a bomb. Here after the swap, a rooski. No, perhaps not. The baby put the batteries and get the heck away. There's no Thatcher, so you know there's a possibility being twitch. You don't know if that's a safe thing or something like that. But really. It's it's not too too difficult to clear them out. You know, have everything like that. Kaid's banned, so it, I guess it's up to you whether you want to actually play the bandit. It also helps in construction as well. But you will decide to do the what we first talked about, and that's pretty much not, not sit there and try to ban a trick, which ever since the release of Mavericks, it's a lot more difficult, I guess you could say. But here we go. Everybody prepped and ready to go. She'll tap her off, take a couple of points of damage. Relocate and then start getting the strike open up at the bottom to go and open up the whole thing. And see, here's another thing that I see a lot of times. You have a, a team that's feeling good and is aggressive, and I think Slaughterhouse is feeling pretty darn good right now. They will be poking at that garage door. Bomb located by attackers. Um, but it looks like that everybody's pretty content hanging out, knowing that, you know, they don't have to get too risky. They're up for Reload! And that they've been winning their gunfights, so no need to take any unnecessary Ready to torch. Torch. A really big fucking hole coming right on.
Reloading. First floor! Yeah, so Maverick's been out here a long, long time holding an angle. I would have loved to see a rotate to the other side. At the very least, they would have a uh, through construction, I'm sure you can pull the whole wall open, but you have that silent aspect. Post will get a kill as well, and that will bring it back in favor. Actually, she'll get a two piece, and she will go, I think, three straight rounds with the multi kill. Doing absolute work for her team. Just hanging out there. And see, here's the difference between Legion and what Maverick was doing. Legion could do this, right? Attackers have to come to the site. Legion, she can just stay there. It's working. It's on to assault fleet, assault fleet, who I believe had a kill on the round as well, but no time left. 15 seconds Legion remaining. Being thrown all over this two traps around here, and they were just all over the side, and left. they are just getting stepped on left and right. She'll find another squad kill from Post. Are you kidding me? Slaughterhouse showing how they can defend just as well as they can defend. And the they did. This was a very, very strong defense, and once the Mavericks started opening up the floor, most of Slaughterhouse decided to give up their positions directly inside of Cash, but that's one of the beauties of, or, sorry, CCTV, but that's one of the beauties of this site, is the fact that you can defend CCTV without being in CCTV. There's so many uh, angles you can play from East Stairs, you can play from Cash Room, you can play from Garage, and there are a lot of ways that you can prevent the attackers from ever stepping foot into CCTV, even if that big uh, east wall is open and the attackers have all of the angles to shoot into cctv and I, I think slaughterhouse did a really good job taking advantage of that powerhouse on the other hand i would have liked to Defenders see them put more pressure on the other attackers. sides of the second floor you know instead of focusing so much of their attack on the east wall i would like to see more people i think there was one or two people going around toward the um toward the bedroom and construction side but i would have liked to see them put more emphasis on it you really only need one person and 15 kills from post melon i just have to shout I'm that telling out, you right uh, now back to back That's... quads or not maybe not back to back quads but in three rounds two quads yeah yeah it's it's pretty big she's been getting a ton of kills for her team uh, but yes, as I was saying, you only really need one person to lock down Ten that angle from remaining. the east wall. The rest of your team can go around and play those different angles and put pressure Five on the defenders. Absolutely. And listen, powerhouse, I, I've seen them, I've talked to them. They've got some gunners on their team. I think their main Achilles heel right now is their coyness, okay? They seem to be pretty motionless when they need to be fluid, right? If you've got intel, you need to act on that intel. If you can't, if it's actionable intel, if, you, if you're if you coy and you hesitate, by the time it is ready, by the time you end up acting, that intel will be no good, right? They, they might be on the other side of the room, and on the reverse side, if they get into a pinch, into a situation, hey, I know somebody's coming, I hear the footsteps, that's not the time to lock down, right? You need to get in their face. You need to surprise them. I understand first day jitters. As a matter of fact, this is the first comp game for a lot of the players that we're gonna have that we're gonna see here today. A lot. But once you get, and I understand the nerves again, but once they get a little bit more comfortable in it, we're gonna see a whole different powerhouse. I know that they have it in them, but can they bring it out today? That's the question. Post below, 15 kills deep. I think that's worth the smiley face. One minute off the round. And what, one thing I want to shout out is Assault Queen seems to have a pretty good mind for being a roamer as well, uh, because she got droned out in the first floor near the nightclub, and as soon as that happened, she rotated out immediately, knew the safe route, went upstairs, tossed out a couple of uh, impact grenades to bail Yellow Snake out of that position. Yellow Snake was posted up in the office, but the uh, the hatch was breaking, so the only way she could rotate out is if she had that uh, impact grenade uh, rotate around. Uh, but Lady Dragon Snare Slayer does have something to say about that, however, as Smash returns to the scene of the crime, or sorry, Small Yellow Snake returns to the scene of the crime, she's going to get shot down by the Sophia. Maybe she has it. See, you got the you got the person advantage. I get it. I get it. And you are alone. And look, that patient's actually paid off. A double kill for her. I'm not sure. That roam from Slaughterhouse, not super effective. I, I think she just started creeping right to where 
her teammate just died from, like where the bullets were coming from, without any necessarily intel. So, did they waste two minutes? Yeah, and that's pretty good, uh, especially because we've been seeing a lot of hesitation from Powerhouse, but is it going to be enough? Two people down, I'm not sure. That's going to have to wait to be seen. It will spot Bomb one hanging out in attackers. blue, looking through that soft wall. They will go ahead and push all the way, and there it is, post back on back in the saddle again she will find lissa oh and a two-piece can't she be stopped post bellet are you kidding me bailey she'll find one it's just like that a 5v3 becomes a 3v2 really really good under pressure play from the side of slaughterhouse and they are able to rack up kill after kill especially post melon the fact remaining. that they're down a member does not phase them whatsoever and now there's so much remaining. pressure put on powerhouse they're forced to rush in lady dragon slayer able to get one uh, but now never Five needs to push into to the go. site there's only three seconds left and the defuser has not even gone down yet so that's going to be slaughterhouse winning yet Operators another defensive round that brings them to match point they're on six wins six round wins so far Yes, indeed, match point, and the hesitation that I've been talking about, when you're on attack, you know, that you're, you're going to lose, right? You have to go and make something happen. If you're on defense, that's fine. You get to turtle it up. They got to come to you eventually. You can shoot it out, okay? If, like, we talked about that. Those trades, right, don't get killed on the roam really early into the round. Um, the roam game right there was really, really good, even though it didn't end up being, well, I'm not going to say really, really good, but even though they didn't end up getting kills or refrags or anything. It did waste two minutes and 10 seconds of Powerhouse's time. And in a normal match, that might not be so great, losing two people for two minutes. But the way that Powerhouse has just been hesitating, um, that was that actually absolutely put him in a position bomb. to win. You know, as good as Post has been all game long, 17 kills up top, she really didn't have to do much that time around she had a punch hole in the wall she just kept ads right down into moto or and and it was you know all she had to do was pull the trigger which is also fun right i'm not and i'm not discounting how good she's been so far but she did not have to work hard for the extra kills that round just because by the time it was time to push the site powerhouse was just too far away yeah and that timing thing that you mentioned is something i want to bring attention to as well because uh I think Powerhouse, that round should have decided if they want to focus on roam clear or focus on holding angles. Because from what I, from what I could see, Lady, um, Lady Dragon Slayer was the only person to be on roam clear. And I think in order to make this whole thing more efficient, you either need like two or three people on roam clear, or you need to focus your efforts on the site, try to take out the, um, take out the anchors and try to, uh, destroy the defender's utility while having a couple members of your team watching the flank angles. And so those are the two main things that I can see people doing for uh, how to deal with roamers. But it didn't seem like Powerhouse had a decision there. They sent one person to roam clear, and then the rest of them were trying to uh, try to reach the site, and it just didn't work quite all that much. So with 22, 21, 2 minutes and 20 seconds left, uh, we are going to see... Not too much map control quite yet, as the attackers haven't made it in the building yet, but they have gotten a decent amount of information from their drone play. Yes, they have. Now, the quick spring brought out this time. Maverick will get lit up probably while opening that lineup at the bottom. And the last time that we saw Solderhouse up here, they are actually lying down right by the bomb, ready for the line to be open, just ready to pop anybody that they see. And there you go. You see somebody on the ground right there, actually on the upper portion of Garage, probably with the puncher opening in that soft wall. Got banded on the roam all the way downstairs, completely on the opposite side of where all the action is going down. And, and I think we've got Powerhouse pretty stacked up around the outside of the site currently. So here she goes and decides maybe a punch hole, maybe even a nitro. We'll get a peek out there. Not sure if anybody is in line, but there she will stay. Meanwhile, action going on upstairs. We'll finally get some walls completely open, but I don't even think anybody from Powerhouse has entered the building yet. Over half the time depleted. One less angle to work with, being that the gym is castled off. And they'll take their time. Just like you. And they're going to take a decent amount of time, but someone's pulled in Garage, and Pyra will take down Lady Dragon Slayer with the LMG. And so this is a pretty strong position, and the attackers are going to have to watch out quite a bit if they want to challenge this. And even just looking at the, um, the utility for the attackers, 
the thing they want to push in with is the Fia cluster charges, but she's down and so many kills right in a row. 4v1, all of them going down and now Todd returns too, but that's not quite enough as Pyra manages to flank out of the bathroom and take her out. That round went by so quickly as the attackers were just completely pulled apart. Yeah, it was good to see trades that time, but the problem is, is every time that we saw Powerhouse, and, we, and I've talked about it before, get into the trade situation, they're always a, a person down, right? A woman down in this. Um, and it just didn't end up working for them. I mean, look at their stat line. It's perfectly fine. Nobody got wrecked on that team. They have a lot of promise. I think 